Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And it is time for the monthly sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what month we're rewinding back to today, and see the cards that I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I like to stop by and revisit an older sheet load of cards for a little sheet load rewind. This is just so if you're newer to my channel or newer to sheet load of cards, you can see some of the older issues if you haven't already, and sometimes I'll give you ideas on how to switch it up a little bit. If after watching today's rewind, you want to watch some more videos in the series, I do have a playlist in that description box below. Let's find out what month we're rewinding back to today. Today's video is all about the February 2021 sheet load of cards. This printable will show you how to create nine A2 size cards from just three pieces of pattern paper and some cardstock. Now, as always, if you don't want to make a whole sheet load, you can use these single card dimensions and use up some scraps or maybe some six by six paper. Now, if you haven't already downloaded the February 2021 sheet load of cards, I will tell you how to do that later on in the video. I will also have the original debut and process videos linked in the description box if you want to check that out. For my cards today, I'm going to be using a scrapbooking kit and some coordinating stickers that I got at Hobby Lobby. I bought these years ago thinking I was going to make some mini journals or, you know, maybe a scrapbook page or two, but unfortunately I haven't yet. So I wanted to get these out and use them because the papers are gorgeous and I love the different elements that came in this kit. Let me know if you have bought some scrapbook kits that you could maybe repurpose for some sheet loads in that comment section below. As I start the process, I will tell you about other products or tools I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before we get to that process, I did want to stop by with a special channel member shout out. I would like to say welcome to membership and thank you for your support to my newest paper trimmer level member, Natalie Daniels. Thank you as well to all of my channel members. Your monthly support keeps me creating here on YouTube and sheet load of cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, make sure to check out the link in my description box or the join button underneath this video. For today's sheet load, I need three pieces of pattern paper, so I decided for my main one to go with the floral that had the black background. Then I wanted to pick the pink stripe to pull out some of the color in the flowers. And finally, because of that black background, I want to use one of the other black and white papers. I kind of put both of those beside the other two, and I did decide to go with the dotted one. I'm going to get started by cutting down my three pieces of pattern paper per the cutting guides. Now don't forget, you don't have to remember any dimensions I give today. You can download this freebie for yourself. If your pattern paper has a certain direction, make sure to keep that in mind before you make the first cuts. But for me, mine can go any way. So I'm going to start by cutting some rows off the top. The first one's at five and a quarter inches tall. The next one is at four and a quarter inches tall. And finally, that third one is one and three quarters inches tall. Once those pieces were all cut, I brought back in the five and a quarter inch tall piece and cut it into three sections that were four inches wide. Then that next row down, the 
four and a quarter inch tall piece. This is going to be cut to three and one eighth or 3.125 inches. That mark is going to be the one that's halfway between the three and the three and a quarter inch mark on your trimmer. Now once I have my three pieces out of that strip, there are some scraps left over and you will see later how I use those. That bottom strip gets cut to the same three and one eighth inches wide, so I get three from that piece as well. Here's a look at the nine pieces you'll get from each 12 by 12 pattern paper. And for my process, I just continued to cut the other two papers just like I showed you. I brought in two pieces of black cardstock for CS1. This will be the mat and the little fishtail banner on the sketch. But today for my cards, I won't be cutting the fishtail, but I still will need those two pieces of black cardstock to cut down my pieces. Cutting parallel to that 11 inch side, I cut a piece at four and a half inches tall and one at three and a quarter inches tall. Now those leftovers again, I'm gonna keep those for a future project, maybe for sentiments. When I had those strips cut down, I then cut them to their final size that ends up being three and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall. And I just kept cutting until I had nine total pieces. There was a bigger piece left over at the end. And once again, it just goes into my scrap bin. This sheet load calls for five pieces of cardstock for card bases, but you will have an extra one since it only makes nine cards. I am gonna quickly show you how I cut and score and fold my card base. I'm gonna choose to make a top fold card, so I cut this in half to four and a quarter inches wide, and then because it's a thicker cardstock, I brought in my score buddy and scored that at five and a half inches. Then these simply get folded in half and I do reinforce that fold with the bone folder. Now even though I have mine open on the top, you can definitely make yours open on the side if that is the way that you prefer. Your next step might be to cut your cardstock for CS2, which is the focal point on the card. But because I'm going to be using some stickers and die cuts and ephemera from the kit, right now I'm going to skip past that. Now one thing with this CS2 piece, it is a great one to use up some scraps. You don't have to have that full sheet of cardstock. This sheet load of cards does call for some corner rounding, but if you don't have a corner rounder or you want to skip this part, you definitely can. For myself, I got out my corner chomper and I will be using the one quarter inch side. I will be rounding the corners on the right side of the cardstock mat, the top and bottom, and I will round those same corners on the largest piece of pattern paper. Now for the small one, I will only need to round the bottom right hand corner. One thing I noticed when I got my pieces out to corner round was that I actually cut my striped paper a little bit too short. But you know what, unless you give these cards out as a set or send more than one to the same person, nobody will ever know. Just go ahead and make it work. Once all of the corners were rounded, I kept out the cardstock mat and the largest piece of pattern papers and matted those all together. Now when you adhere these pieces, you will want to make sure that the left edges are aligned. Now sometimes this is tricky to do just with it out on your worktop, so I brought in something that is going to have a flat edge. So like for me, I'm just going to use my score buddy because it was handy, but if you have a trimmer or a misty, it just helps if you place that cardstock right up against the ledge and then you can put your pattern paper up against that same ledge and center it and then press it down. Let me know in that comment section below if this is a trick you have tried or a trick that you're definitely going to try now. I continued adhering these pieces together. Most of it was done off camera until I had nine matted pattern papers. My next step was to get pattern paper piece A onto the front of each card base. I adhered these flat down and tried to get a nice even border all the way around. 
Now when I add my papers like this, I usually turn my card around so it's upside down and I will align three edges, kind of make sure or see how that fourth edge will be. And if it looks pretty even, then I go ahead and press it down. Once again, I just continued adding all of these until each of the nine card bases had one of these pretty pieces of pattern paper on the front. Once those were all adhered together, it was time to make my card kits. And this is just what I call it when I mix and match the pieces for the final cards. I find if I do this ahead of time that I avoid later having two pieces on a single card that are of the same pattern. For the first card, I grab the dotted background with the floral matted card stock and then the stripes for the bottom. Now for the second card, I'm going to do a little bit differently. I'm going to have the stripes in the middle and choose the floral for the bottom. This just makes the cards look slightly different. Now for the third one, you can make it match either of these first two. Just make sure for all of the future card kits you put together, you use that same formula whether you skip the floral or not. So I'll show you here how I put the rest together. And if you don't want to see this, you can skip forward a minute or so. Once I had all of my card kits put together, I added the smallest piece of pattern paper, piece C, to the bottom of pattern paper piece B. Now this should just align right along the left edge and that bottom right corner should match up and be rounded together. Then this piece gets adhesive on the back and added to the card base. And once again, per the sketch, we are gonna align this to the left edge. Now, even though I am adhering all of my stuff with just regular adhesive, no foam, you could definitely pop some of these pieces up if you want. Just for myself for mailing, I like to keep everything as flat as possible. And I do know later on with the embellishments, I might have a little dimension there. Speaking of embellishing, that's what I'm gonna do next to help my stickers Kind of stand out from the background of the card i brought in some vellum and a circle die and off camera i cut nine stitch circles and you'll see here they fit nicely on the card and then you can still see that pattern paper through it i decorated each of those vellum circles with a combination of these clear stickers and the chipboard stickers and because that did take a little bit long i won't make you watch the process but here's a look at how I decorated the fronts of each of the cards. To add a little sparkle to the cards and to kind of tie in some of the gold foiling from the elements, I added diamond dots in a metallic gold to the front of each card. Now here's a look at the pattern paper scraps I was left over with and off camera I decorated the insides and this is what I had left. I just love using those scraps up as much as possible right away. And here's a close up look at each of the finished cards.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this set of cards using a scrapbooking kit and the ephemeras and stickers that came with it. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the free printable. If you would like to download the February 2021 sheet load of cards, as always, I do ask that you're a subscriber to my channel. It's free, it's quick, it's easy. If you're not already subscribed, just click on that button right below this video. You are going to find this link in my description box right above my P.O. box address. Below it, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. You're free to download it and print it, or you can download it and view it on screen while you craft. Don't forget, if you're going to make cards with it, to use the hashtags at the top of the printable. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.